Hello everyone, welcome to the 45th lecture of this course. So in our previous lesson, we have seen the structural valve system and how we can calculate the time period for structural valve system. One thing I forgot to mention in our previous lesson that whenever we are changing the structural valve system or you can say sorry, the structural system, in that case, uh, the response reduction factor will also be changed based on the structural system that we are choosing. So if you see the table number 9 of IS uh 1893 part 1 2016 so in that case you can see that the table number 9 is giving us the response reduction factor which i have explained earlier also so for the structural wall system and basically the reinforced structural walls uh, you can see here reinforced concrete structural walls uh, we have this response reduction factor if the RC structural wall is uh, considered as ordinary. In that case, the response reduction factor will be 3. And uh, if the structural wall is considered as ductile, then the response reduction factor will be 4. And above, we have the unreinforced masonry with and without uh, seismic bands. So, uh, this also you can have a look. So here, uh, if you are designing in zone 3, 4 and 5, so obviously the ductility criteria need to be considered. So in most of the cases, we will be considering the ductile RC structural valves and the response reduction factor will be 4. So what we have to do, uh, if we see the static and the dynamic uh, load cases that we have defined. So here, this response reduction factor will be choosing as 4 or 3 based on the structural wall that you are considering okay so here you can see i have considered four and also when you are doing the dynamic uh, analysis and defining the dynamic loads for you can say design so in that case uh, as we have defined the response spectra so here in the response spectra also you can see the response reduction factor need to be changed as per the structural uh, system that you have chosen okay so here uh, in both the cases i have taken the uh, response reduction factor as 4. So, here this model is a different model uh, and in this lesson we are going to talk about the dual system. Okay, so before uh, getting into the technical part, so what you have to do, just have to have a look on the code that what code says about the dual system. So, if you see here, the code is saying that the buildings with a dual system consist of moment resisting frames and structural walls such that both of the following conditions are valid so let's see what are the following conditions two systems are designed to resist total design lateral force in proportion to their lateral stiffness considering interaction of two system at all floor levels so that means both structural wall and the frame that means the column beam need to be designed to resist the uh, total base shear or you can say to, re to resist the total uh, you can say forces that we, that we are getting due to the seismic activity and the you can say proportion of you can say force distribution in the uh, systems like the frame and the wall it will be in terms of their lateral stiffness okay again one more thing you are seeing the second point is the moment resisting frames are designed to resist independently at least 25 percent of the design base shear so the moment resisting frames that the column beam need to be designed to take at least or you can say to resist at least 25 percent of the design base shear okay so whenever we are modeling a uh, structural wall or wall in the in our analytical model you will see that most of the forces will be attracted by the structural walls itself okay especially when the uh, we are we are seeing the forces for the lateral forces you'll see that as the structural wall has uh, you can say higher stiffness along uh, a particular direction so it will attract the uh, lateral forces in this direction much uh, more than our columns okay so but what we have to do we have to design our columns and beams for at least 25 percent of the design base shear. so how we can actually do that so here i have prepared a model with columns and walls if you see the plan also so here we have 
uh, four four walls in all the two directions and we have uh, columns also so now here i have uh, uh, defined the static and dynamic uh, load cases uh, the response spectrum analysis we have done and the base shear also we have uh, you can say scaled up uh, as we are going to explain the design part right so now what we have to do first at the very first we have to check that what is the percentage of lateral force that is taken by the shear walls and the columns okay so for that what i will do i will uh, go to this bottom story so i'll go to select select uh, stories and i'll select this story one and base select close and right click show selected objects only so here you can i can see the bottom story and let us see how the forces are uh, you can say attracted by the columns and shear walls so if i just go to this display frame pier spindle link forces and i'll click on, click on this frames to take the columns first okay so frames and for rsx that means the response spectrum load in x direction i'll take the shear here you can see the shear maximum shear that we are getting so four columns all these corner four columns it is 17.9525 so we just have to uh, do the calculation actually 17.9525 four columns so that means if i just write it here let me okay so Four multiplied by seventeen point nine five two five. Okay, like these four columns: one, two, three, and four. Okay, and the other columns. The other columns, if you see, other this four columns in between. You can see it is nineteen point seven one four seven okay so plus plus 4 multiplied by 19.7147 okay so what will be the answer here so it is for x direction remember it is for x direction we are seeing okay so what is the answer in that case so it will be 150.7 double six eight kilonewton okay 150 point double six eight kilonewton we are getting which is resisted by the columns now if we see the same for the shear wall so i'll just click on this peers i'll remove the frames apply and you can see the base shear taken by the uh shear walls along oriented along the x direction okay so this is by the columns now by the walls if you see so it is 230 point you can see 230.2603 okay 230.2603 okay fine so it will be Four multiplied by two thirty point two six zero three. So how much you are getting? How much you are getting? So four into two thirty point two six zero three. So it is around nine twenty one point zero four. Right, nine twenty one point zero four. Zero four kilonewton fine so these are the base shear taken by wall and taken by the column so now we can easily find out the percentage uh, of base shear taken by the column and taken by the 
uh, one so how we can find it so percentage of for for that we need the total base share actually so what i will do i will just show you the total base share so i'll just go to structure output base reaction and right click here and if you see the static base share as we have scaled up so that static and dynamic base share will be the same so what is the design base share that we are taking it is 11.06 sorry 1106.7756 kilonewton okay in both the directions fine so for x direction for x direction okay let me write it here yes so for x direction percentage of base share taken by columns how much it will be 150.668 by 1106.7756 multiplied by 100 percent so how much it is how much we are getting 150.668 by 1106.7756 okay so we are getting 13 point 13.61 percent right 13.61 percent so we can say that okay let it be 13.61 only fine so uh now now what we will do now what we will do now we will find the percentage of reinforce percentage of base share taken by the walls so how much it will be so it will be 921 point though it is not required for us but still let us see for our understanding 7756 by multiplied by 100 percent so you can see here so how much we are saying that 921.04 multiplied by 100 so it is around 83. Point Two one, so we can say that it is eighty three percent. Okay, so eighty three percent of the base share is, uh, you can say, taken by the wall, and only a minimum amount of thirteen percent only taken by the columns. So in such cases, when maximum base share is taken by the walls itself, we can directly call it as a structural wall system. Okay, because the columns are basically taking nothing. Okay, so so in such cases what we have to do uh, our code said that we have to design these frames or the columns at least for 25 percent of base share at least for 25 percent of the base share but here we can see only 13 percent is taken by the columns fine so now let us find for the y direction also okay you can you can just write it down uh, in your uh, if you have notebooks with you and then we can continue so let us see what is the condition in y direction so i will just go to here member forces i'll go to frames again now and i will change it to rsy apply so here you can see now it is 16.8129 and 16.6302 okay 16.8129 plus 16.6302 fine so how much we are getting here by the column so in y direction base share taken by column is equal to 4 multiplied by 
16.8129 plus 4 multiplied by 16.6302 okay so how much we are getting we are getting a value of 133.7724 kilonewton and what is the base shear taken by the walls okay so base shear actually okay so what is the base shear taken by the walls so if i just see for the peers apply so you can see these walls uh sorry yes these walls are taking the base shear here now it is 237.403 okay so 403 okay 403 so 4 multiplied by 237.403 how much we are getting 4 multiplied by 237.403 so it is 949.612 949.612 kilonewton it is taken by the wall so if you find the percentage um, in in y direction so you'll see that by the column the percentage taken is around 12.08 or we can call it as 12 percent and by the walls it is around 85.7 percent or we can ma make it as 86 percent okay so here also you can see that most of the base shed is taken by the wall itself a okay? very less amount of 12 percent is taken by the columns fine so now now what you have to do uh here okay so now what you have to do as the code says that we have to design the columns or against the frames for at least 25 percent of the base year so let us find out the scale factor uh using which we will be scaling up the base shear okay so now the scale factor for x direction how much it will be so if you remember for x direction columns are taking 13.6 percent right so what will be the scale factor so the scale factor will be we need 25 percent right so 25 by 13.6 so how much we are getting 25 multiplied sorry divided by 13.6 so we are getting 1.84 actually 1.84 as the scale factor okay and for y direction it was 12 percent taken by the column so what will be the scale factor so the scale factor will be 25 by 12 which is around 2.08 so i'll make it as 2.1 percent fine 2.1 percent so these are the sorry not 2.1 percent it is 2.1 the scale factor sorry so this is the scale factor that we need to use to scale up the base shear fine in both the directions now the problem is that if we scale up the base shear for the total model so what will happen so the uh, scaled forces will be applied to all the structural elements but we do not want that right what we want we want to design only the frames with this scaled uh, you can say base shear so obviously when the base shear is going to scale up so the forces will be more now in that case right so what i will do for that 
uh, I will do a different process. So I will not assign this scale factor. I will not assign this scale factor to the load case itself. So what basically what code says that you have to scale up the base share. So to scale up the base share, we have to go to this define load cases and suppose RSX and we have to provide this scale factor here to scale up the base share. But if I do so, what will happen? It will be applied to all the structural elements. Okay, so that's why I will uh, do a different process. So let me create a load combination with an individual load just to show you. So let me take RSX. So it will be 1.84 RSX. Okay, let me change this to 1.84 just to verify whether uh, the columns are taking 25% base share or not and add new combo that it will be rsy okay response spectrum along y direction and it will be 2.1 2.1 rsy rsy and i will change it to 2.1 2.1 okay close okay now similarly let us see the forces again so i will just go to this display frame pierce pendrel link forces i'll check for the frames only for the columns only ah, okay so rsx i'll go to shear 3 uh sorry shear 2 and apply shear 3 okay sorry yes so uh, rsy we are checking yeah fine so now you can see uh, we are checking for RSY, right? Okay, I am checking for the load case. It should be load combination because we have scaled up in combination. RSY apply. You can see how the forces are scaled up. Okay, so now if I see here that it is 35.37071. And here it is 34.9234 in between so if we find it again if we find it again so how much it will be how we can do that or 35.3071 okay fine so let us do it again so if you see here it is the same for all these four columns this one 35. Let me zoom it a bit. Yes, this one it is 35.0071. This is also 35.3071. And in between we have 34.9234. Right. So now if we find the forces taken by the columns, it will be again for 4 into 35.30. Seven one plus four into thirty four point three sorry nine two three four nine two three four this these values okay nine two three four so how much we are getting so we are getting a value of two eighty point nine double two okay so if you find the percentage it is for y direction okay you find the percentage how much it 280.922 divided by 11 uh, 06.7756 this is our base here right multiplied by 100 so we are getting a value of 25.38 percent so you can see that after assigning this scale factor we are getting the scaled forces here okay so that means the base share is scaled here so so what i have done i have not ex uh, applied in the uh, load case which i have defined for the whole structure but i have created another load combination with an individual load case and i have applied the you can say uh, multiplication factor here or scale factor here just to check whether it is working or not Okay, whether the columns are taking 25% or not. Similarly, I will do for the X direction also. I'll change it to shear 2. 
x direction 1.84 rsx apply okay so you can see here 33.0326 okay so it will be 4 multiplied by 33.0326 4 means this 1 2 3 and 4 you can see it is 33.0326 plus 4 into here it is see 36.275 most probably let me check yes 36.275 okay so let me just move this now i will add these four base share taken by these four columns so it is 36.275 so how much we are getting how much we are getting let us see 4 multiplied by 33.0326 plus 4 multiplied by 36.275 okay so we are getting a value of 277.2304 kilonewton now taken by the column so what is the percentage so then so the percentage will be 277.2304 by 1106.7756 okay multiplied by 100 so how much it is 277.2304 divided by 1106.7756 multiplied by 100 it is around 25.048 percent that means 0 05 percent so here also you can see in the x direction also the columns are taking 25 percent of base share if you scale up with that factor okay now how we can design the elements with these scaled up forces because uh, as we have seen we are not going to apply this a scale factor in our uh, load case itself because if we apply directly in the load case definition it will be applied to the whole structural element all the structural element okay even for the walls also okay but we do not want that we only want to design the frames for the particular uh, with the scaled uh, forces right so in that case what i will do i will use the uh, you can say load combinations okay so how i am going to use the load combinations let me just show you one second okay fine so uh here let me go to define uh load combinations so let me delete these two not required because i have just created just to check okay so previously we have created the service load combinations now i'll uh, i have also created the you can say design load combinations so what are the design com load combinations so as per is 456 2000 table 18 what are the design combinations we know uh, the you can say gravity combinations we all know 1.5 dead load actually 1.5 dead load is not mentioned actually but we will create 1.5 dead load 1.5 dead load plus live load then 1.5 dead load plus 1.5 earthquake load if it is suppose it is static i am considering eq as static so both in x and y direction so it will be plus minus okay then it will be 1.2 dead load plus minus sorry uh, 1.2 dead load plus 1.2 live load plus minus 1.2 eq this is also static fine then it will be 0 0.9 dead load plus 1 point plus minus 1.5 eq this is also static fine 
okay so these are the basic load combinations that we will be creating design combinations but when we are designing for the response spectrum load cases or the dynamic load cases in that case we need to use only the you can say uh, absolute value so we will not use any sign here or we will not use any negative sign here because i don't know whether you have you have seen properly here that the the base shear that when we were checking it is showing plus and minus both direction so as it is combining all the modes okay the modes in x direction so that means plus and minus okay the modes which is in positive direction in negative direction of x negative x it is also combined in the response spectrum load case right uh, using the cqc or srss method these things i have already explained uh, earlier right so that's why uh, in response spectrum or dynamic load case you do not have to use the sign convention so for dynamic load case suppose we are not designing for the static dynamic so it will be 1.5 dead load plus 1.5 rs okay in both direction so this is my dynamic rs x and rs y it will be then 1.2 dead load plus 1.2 live load plus 1.2 rs okay so rs x and rs y there will be no minus and 0 0.9 dead load plus 1.5 rs this is also both x and y okay so these are the design combinations now now what we will do so these are the basic design combinations as per is456 table 18 now what we will do we will create another set of load combination only for the earthquake uh, only for the combinations with earthquake forces so uh, for now we will uh, you can say we will not add the static one because we are not going to design for the static load combinations right uh, the low static load uh, earthquake load so we are going to apply the dynamic uh, forces so here as we are going to design with the response spectrum load cases so what we will do we will scale up these factors in both the direction okay so we have the scale factor along x direction as 81.84 and scale factor along y direction as 2.1 so we will create load combinations with the scale factor of this like 1.5 multiplied by 1.84 there will be some value and again 1.5 multiplied by 2.1 there will be some value it will be used for the x it will be used for the y okay so uh, another set of load combination we will use for the design of frames okay so let us see how we can do that so as uh, previous previously we have defined the uh, you can say service load combinations similarly i have defined the uh, design load combinations also with 2000 series so this 1000 series just for our understanding we kept it as uh, you can say for serviceability and 2000 series we have kept for the basic design combination so you can see these are the basic design combinations similarly we have created right now same set with increased load factors okay same set with increased load factors so how we can do that how we can do that so let us see so for this i will use let me just go to show all objects okay for this i will use a very useful tool of uh, new etabs it was there in safe but now we added in the etabs also is the interactive database so i'll go to edit and here you'll find this interactive database so i'll just go to this interactive database and if i go to model definition and load combinations i click on ok here so here you can see uh, all the load combinations are there okay the uh, these are the load combinations so obviously i'll just click on this excel now and i'll click on this send table to excel so you can see here it has created these 
excel uh, sheet with the load combinations now here what we have to do here what we have to do uh, we will copy this load combinations 2012 because these are the design combinations okay 2020 okay this is my design combinations that i am going to use so i'll just make a copy of this fine and i'll open another excel and i may just paste it here control v fine okay so now if you see here we have the load combinations so i'll just filter this let me just okay let me just filter this and i'll just select only the response spectrum x and y okay so these are the response spectrum x and y that i have to replace okay this i have to replace so here this 1.2 if you remember that for x direction the scale factor was 1.84 right so if i just multiply 1.2 multiplied by 1.84 so it will be 2.208 right 2.208 let us check again again 1.84 multiplied by uh, 1.2 it is 2.208 and 1.5 if i multiply with 1.84 it will become 2.76 fine so what i will do along x direction it is rsx 1.2 i'll change it to 2.208 fine and here in the name also i'll change it to 2.208 uh, okay and this series i'll be changing i'll be making it as making it as 3000 series so 303015 okay now here in the y direction uh, okay let us finish the x direction first again rsx with 1.5 so it will be 2.76 2.76 okay and i'll name this i'll change the name to 3017 fine now rsy rsx another rsx with 1.5 it will also be changed as 2.76 2.76 enter i'll change the name to 3019 fine and uh okay so all the x direction we have changed now y direction y direction the scale factor was for y direction scale factor was 2.1 so 1.2 multiplied by 2.1 it was 3.15 and 1.5 multiplied by 2. sorry 1.5 multiplied by 2.1 is 3.15 and 1.2 multiplied by 2.1 we are getting 2.52 okay so all the 1.2 this 1.2 will become 2.52 and this 1.5 will become 3.15 this is for rsy yeah. 3.15 and this is also 3.15 3.15 okay let us see if it is okay Three point uh, RSY three point one five two point seven six three point one five 
ओके टू पॉइंट सेवन सिक्स टू पॉइंट फाइव टू टू पॉइंट टू जीरो टू देर शुड बी अनदर वन पॉइंट टू वन पॉइंट टू वन पॉइंट फाइव वन पॉइंट फाइव Fine. So we are done with changing the uh, factors. You can change these names also. It will be three zero, and it will be three point one five. Three point one five. Okay, and this will be three zero one eight, and it will be three point one five. okay this is 3019 it will be 2.76 just the names i am changing okay 2.76 uh, 76 and 6, here it will be 2.76 fine here it will be 3 and the factor for earthquake only we are changing for the response spectrum okay so it will be also 2.52 2.52 okay and this it is already 2.208 we have changed fine okay so i'll just uh, take all these okay and i will remove the filter now what i will do that the static load cases for the earthquake we do not require we do not require this static load cases actually so you can see up to here we have the static load cases i'll just right click and i will delete fine response spectra we have changed so what you have to do we have to change these names okay fine so all the response spectrum you can see all the response spectrum cases we have changed the factor we have changed the name also okay here also we have to change the name so let us just uh, quickly change the name so it will be 3 Zero one. So I can just copy this. Control C and Control V. Fine. This one will be three zero two. I'm changing, making it as three thousand series. Control C, Control V. Fine. Control C, Control V. Okay. Control V. Control V. Same three zero two. these are the 302 load combinations all the uh 1 2 3 4 5 loads are there okay now it is 303 and what it is eq i don't know how eq is already still there we need to delete this delete it yeah okay now this response spectrum is uh 2.208 so i'll just go to here okay you can see 301 302 i can make it as 3003 and this will be 2.208 2.208 i'll press enter and i will copy this control c so all this 15 i'll be changing control v sorry control z okay fine now this the scale factor is 2.52 so i'll go here i'll make it as 3 3004 and it is 2.52 okay enter i'll copy this control c 
I'll take all this 206 and control V. Okay. So close all the 3000 series. Previously, there was no required of changing the names actually. Here, directly we can do for all the load combinations. Now, the combination is 2.76. Okay. So here, this one, I'll make it as 3005 and it is 2.76 so 2.76 enter I'll copy this I'll take these two and control V okay enter now this the scale factor is 3.15 I'll just make it 3.15 enter and this will be 3005 okay I'll copy this no it, it will be 3006 sorry 3006 okay I'll copy this control C and control V very carefully you have to see which combinations are like you can see these three loads are under this uh, it was 2018 load uh, combination so only these names need to be changed okay so dead load plus rsy now here it will be 3007 3007 and what is the load uh, factor it is 2.76 right so 2.76 enter so 3007 copy for these two control V. Now 3008 last. 3008 and the load factor is 3.15. 3.15 enter. Control C and control V. Okay. So we have created the 3000 series load combinations now if you have uh, if you have static load so what you have to do similarly uh, you have to change the names and the load factors for the static loads also but lo the load factors need to be fi find actually using the similar process that i have explained now we just copy exactly the same sorry whatever is given here all the things you just copy from here control C. I'll go to the Excel sheet that is created here from the E tabs. I'll go down. I'll go to the last here, and I'll press Control V. So you can see it is added. Do not press Save or something. Just minimize it and go here. Go to Excel and click on this Retrieve Table from Excel. Now you can see in the list this 3000 series is also added okay now click on this apply to model and click on done now if you go to define and load combinations you can see this 3000 series is added and in this 3000 series if you see this response spectrum this uh, scale factor that we have uh, found out it is added so what you have to do whenever you are designing the frame of a dual system so suppose i am going to design concrete frame design and uh, i can select let me run the analysis first okay so i go to design concrete frame design and i'll go to select design combinations so here you can see the 2000 series is selected so or the concrete frame design this 2000 series we are not going to use right which are we are going to use so we are going to use this 3000 series so from 3001 to 3008 right so i'll go to here if you have static obviously this response spectrum will be removed and the static load cases will be coming here okay uh, so this 3000 series i have added and click on okay and then i need to perform the design so what will happen the frames will be designed with a scaled uh with scaled forces okay so obviously the i can say 
section sizes will be changed the reinforcement will be changed so uh, accordingly the stiffness of the members will also be changed and it will be designed for the 25 percent of the base share total base share okay so this is it for this lesson if you have any doubt regarding this lesson you can always ask me in the chat or in the comment box i will try to uh, answer your questions as early as possible thank you and see you in the next lecture